All right, as advertised, let me introduce our guest. His name is Hert Wilders. He's a politician in the Netherlands. He's the leader of the Party for Freedom, which is the third largest political party in the Netherlands. He's been an outspoken critic of radical Islam. He's campaigned to stop the Islamization of the Netherlands. He's also been the target of a prosecution for his beliefs and comments. The Amsterdam Court of Appeals in 2009 ordered his prosecution for incitement to hatred and discrimination. In 2011, he was acquitted of these charges. He lives in the Netherlands with his wife. He's under a constant threat of death. Uh, In his home, he has a panic room in case he's attacked. And uh, this is because he's spoken his mind. His book is called Marked for Death, Islam's War Against the West and Me by Hert Wilders. Uh, Mr. Wilders, thank you very much for joining us. Well, uh, thank you for having me on uh, your show, uh, Mark. It's an honor. Uh, Where are you now? I'm now in uh, Washington, uh, D.C., actually. And what are you doing in the United States? Well, I'm here to promote uh, my book uh, in New York, uh, Dallas, uh, Washington, other cities, because, um, well, I want to try to um, show also the American public what happened uh, in Europe with the mass immigration and the Islamization of our society, and perhaps tell the American public what the real face of Islam is and that what is happening and has happened to Europe today might and will easily happen to America tomorrow. So it's a kind of warning um, to the American people uh, as well. Uh, just to just to get us started and to establish some background, uh, yeah. let, let me take you out of the confines of the Netherlands to Denmark. Back to 2005, when a Danish newspaper had printed some editorial cartoons, some of which featured a likeness of Mohammed. Uh, This led to all kinds of protests and acts of violence by radical Muslims. The Danish embassy in Pakistan was bombed. Uh, A Danish embassy in Syria was set afire uh, in Lebanon and Iran uh, as well. Uh, European buildings were were stormed, uh, burning the Danish, Dutch, Norwegian, French, and German flags in, in Gaza City. Uh, and on and on, Danish Prime Minister at the time, uh, Anders Rasmussen, described the controversy as Denmark's worst international crisis since World War II. Uh, critics of the cartoons described them as Islamophobic or racist, uh, to, which, to which I observe that may or may not be true, but in a nation that operates under secular laws like your nation, (laughs) the United States, and Denmark, Uh, in the USA, for example, it is not unlawful to burn an American flag. You can do so without the danger of of a criminal prosecution. Uh, You can also burn a Bible in this country. It may be a despicable, tasteless act, but it's not illegal. And radical Muslims in other countries... In, in the U.S. or in the Netherlands or Denmark, would, would reserve for themselves the, the right to exercise vigilante justice and murder somebody for burning a Koran. Now, if they choose to do this in their own theocratic countries, that's their prerogative. But what gives them the notion that in another country governed by secular laws that they have this extra-legal power? Yeah, well, I fully uh, agree with that, you know. Um, and you in uh, America have at least a First Amendment. You have a First Amendment that we are, I am very jealous about. We don't have it in uh, Europe. Uh, we don't have it in Canada, not in Australia. And <clears throat> that means that if you speak out your mind like uh, Kurt Westerkamp did with his cartoons, or that as I did with my short documentary uh, Fitna a few years ago, um, you will be taken uh, to court uh, by uh, many uh, liberal and leftist organizations by uh, mosques organizations and they use every opportunity the first chapter in my book mark for death is called the x versus the pen and we are used in the western free world to use our pen to write an article to write a book to make a movie to draw a cartoon and what we get in return is uh, an x uh, as happened to uh, uh, Kurt Westergaard that you uh, mentioned uh, uh, quite rightly 
literally in his own home when a Somali guy came in and tried to uh, kill him with an axe. And because he went in time to a safe room, uh, his life uh, uh, was saved. But this is the reality of Europe today. And um, it's not only the legal jihad in our courts, but if you walk around the streets in uh, either the Netherlands or Germany or Denmark or France or United Kingdom, you see that it's deteriorated for the worst. We have today honor killings. We have genital mutilation. We have forced marriage. We have Sharia banking. We even have, and a lot of Americans don't know that, in the United Kingdom there are 60 Sharia courts uh, active today where uh, the testimony of a woman, for instance, is worth half of that of a man. And this is, I believe, what uh, Europe faces today. The biggest disease in Europe, and perhaps also in America today, is called cultural relativism. The misconception um, uh, put into our heads by political correct uh, politicians and academics that all cultures are equal. And my point in my book exactly is the opposite. We should be proud to say that our culture is based on Christianity, on Judaism, on humanism, and is far superior than the Islamic culture. This is not... This is not a racist or an extremist or kind of remark. It's the reality. And we should be proud of who we are and defend the values that we uh, share. And even though in the United States, uh, much of our system of secular law is influenced by Judeo-Christian culture and values, it is not illegal to burn a Bible, not the Old Testament or the New Testament. If I were to talk to a fundamentalist Muslim in the United States who's living here under U.S. law and explain that it is not illegal to burn a Bible. Do you also understand it is not illegal to burn a Koran in this country? And can you live with that law? And if an, if his answer was no, because under his religious laws, he's entitled to take the life of somebody who burns a Koran. I guess my comment to him would be, then you better leave this country. Well, exactly um, uh, my point. Um, you know, um, if people, uh, and uh, I have a big problem with the Islamic ideology, but I have nothing against Muslims or people, and I even acknowledge the fact that the majority of the Muslims are non-extremists, they are law-abiding people. But if people adhere to our laws, to our constitution, to our values, I mean, they are equal as anybody else, and we can live together peacefully. But as long as they use Islam for what it literally means, submission. If they want to submit anybody in our society to Sharia law, if they don't accept either our laws in Europe or your First Amendment in America, uh, we should draw a line. And we should tell anybody that if you, if you cross that line, if you want to act according to Sharia, if you want to follow up on jihad like uh, Mohammed did, who is an example for so many Muslims, then there is no place in, your free, in our free society for you. And we should extradite those people. This is the only way. Welcoming the people who want to um, um, assimilate in our societies and extradite the people who don't. That would be a very important first step for us to um, tell what we accept in our societies and what we don't. And now, you were in fact prosecuted in a court in your own country for incitement to hatred and discrimination. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, uh, it was very strange because the public prosecutor in Holland did not want to prosecute me. But Holland is one of the three countries, I believe, in the world where anybody uh, who complains at the police um, can go to a higher court and try to overrule the decision of the prosecutor not to prosecute me. And they did. Many mosques organizations, but also uh, multicultural organizations, went to the court, and the court overruled the decision and ordered the public prosecutor against their will to prosecute me. And this was because of my movie, Fitna, where I compared... Uh, the Quran uh, with Mein Kampf, uh, which indeed is a very uh, uh, solid uh, comparison. Uh, in the Quran, there was more anti-Semitism than uh, in uh, Mein Kampf, and there are many other reasons why you, you should uh, be able to compare it. And at the end of the day, of course, I mean, this is what the legal jihad that uh, uh, those organizations uh, try to do, to, to get you a lot of energy, to get bad publicity, to have, cost you a lot of money. And finally, uh, luckily, after three years of a terrible uh, ordeal in this kangaroo court in Holland, I was acquitted uh, on all uh, charges. I believe these organizations are not going to the United Nations uh, to complain that this will have no effect um, for the outcome of my trial. But the point is that, once again, if you speak the truth about Islam, this will happen. I'm sure that if I would have made, and I'm not planning to, 
if I would have made a movie or have spoken out or would be critical against Christianity, about Christianity, all those things would not have happened. I would not have been taken to court. I would not have been marked for death. I would not have had a fatwa on my head, and the Dutch soldiers in Afghanistan would not have been threatened because of uh, what I say and what I did. It only happens because this totalitarian ideology called Islam does not accept any criticism and believes that um, what they believe in should be valid for anybody, even for the non-Muslims. Mark Stein, who wrote the foreword to your book, was also prosecuted in his country in Canada for hate speech, for very similarly criticizing Islam. Yeah, he was, uh, and uh, um, uh, very unfortunate indeed. And there were more. There was Mrs. Uh, Sabadovic uh, Wolf, an uh, activist uh, in Austria, who was taken uh, to court. There was Lars Hedegaard, a uh, free speech uh, advocate in uh, Denmark, who was taken to court. Um, um, uh, even your own American, Rachel Ehrenfeld, mm-hmm. who wrote a book about a few years ago. She wrote a book about Saudi Arabian terrorism. I believe she sold four books in the United Kingdom, and there, for that reason, she was taken to court. And uh, even in America, the so-called Ehrenfeld law in New York State, and later also federally, you outlawed, you made possible that people could not sue uh, um, any American for uh, if they are being taken to court outside the United States. But this is what they are trying to do, to silence us. And I believe that nothing is more powerful than the truth, even if the truth is unpleasant uh, for many people. And free people anywhere, free men and women everywhere, should never be silenced or for victim to violent or legal intimidation. Uh, Mr. Fiddles, let's take a, a break here. When we come back, uh, tell, us, tell us about the, uh, the, the plight of uh, Theo Van Gogh in your country, who, in fact, is the great-great-nephew of the painter Vincent van Gogh, and uh, what his fate was for his criticism of Islam. 713-8585, our telephone number right back on 850 KOA. Dutch Member of Parliament, Herd Filters, is our guest. His book, Marked for Death, Islam's War Against the West and Me. Uh, Tell us about Theo van Gogh and his fate. Well, Theo van Gogh was um, an artist, a movie maker in the Netherlands, and he was so brave together with um, um, Ayan Hirshi Ali. You must know her. We've had her on the program. Uh, yeah. And he was, together with her, he made a movie uh, called Submission. And the movie was about how women are treated uh, in Islam with Quranic verses who said that women uh, should be submissive. Uh, a movie, 10 minutes or something like that. And because he did that, and Ayan Hirshi Ali was protected, as I am, by uh, the Dutch uh, diplomatic police, Theo van Gogh was not. And on the day, in the midst of Amsterdam, on broad daylight, a Moroccan um, Islamic radical, um, well, slaughtered him. He cut his throat. He put another knife uh, in his uh, chest. Uh, 